Hi guys and welcome back to BGFC TV for episode 2 of the Golden Lions. Now if you're not familiar with us, we're a UPSL team from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Now the Golden Lions were able to open their season this weekend against the National Knights. And to analyze that match, we have two members of the Golden Lions team. And I'm joined here by the Golden Lions coach, Evan Sutherland. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, Evan, let's talk about this season. Let's talk about a preseason matchup. Talk to me a little bit about that. I know it was a tough loss, mm -hmm. especially after coming into this preseason game, you know, 11 to 1 last season. Sure. Well, Anna, the preseason is, is exactly what that is. It's an early season game for us to see some guys play. Uh, our goal going into it, we dressed 22 players. That's actually two more than we're allowed for a UPSL match. But we wanted to see guys play. Uh, we went into it saying, you know, we're going to give some starters about 45 minutes see how they do in that amount of time, and then, and then get the next group of guys that we felt like were a little bit behind those players, an opportunity to play 45, 30 minutes, something like that. So our goal was to try to play as many players as we could, see how they performed in a high-level game. Uh, the team that we played, uh, Louisville Metro, was a good side. They were coming out of an indoor you know, season where they were pretty much in form, where our guys are now just starting to ramp up and get going. So our fitness levels were nowhere where they need to be. Um, and it showed in that game, you know, but, but for us, we, we learned a lot about our team. Uh, we learned a lot about, you know, where we are in the preseason moving into, you know, as we go into the end of March, into April, uh, where we've got three tough games. Um, but it, it gives you a great idea just to, to start the season where you are. Um, that kind of sets the barometer for where we want to go come June and July as far as playing some of the best teams in the country, because that, that Metro team's a good side. They, they won the National Indoor Championship. Um, they've got, you know, some guys that get paid quite a bit of money to play, and it shows you, you know, where we need to be moving forward. Talk to me a little bit about the training sessions, you know, after that match, because mm -hmm. obviously a tough loss, it, it takes a toll on the team. What was kind of your motivation getting them ready to, you know, play the Nashville Knights? Well, we went into the next week knowing, hey, we've got to start working on our fitness levels. Getting, we got to get guys to be able to play 75, 90 minutes. We're, we're not there yet. Um, we, Tuesday was kind of a wash because it was a torrential downpour, but we got 45 minutes in of strength, uh, conditioning, stuff like that. And I think it actually did carry over to um, a transition into to Saturday's match. We did look a little bit more fit. Uh, Wednesday, we got into some more fitness stuff and then functional play, uh, which is – you know, Wednesdays we typically have most of the group there because uh, obviously we've got guys coming in from out of town. Um, and that makes things complicated, you know, because you don't get two to three days with everybody in, in, in their training. And that makes it tough because you're trying to, you know, set tactics, um, you know, how we want to defend, how we want to attack, how we want to build through the thirds, um, how we want to press, all those things. And you have a limited amount of time to do it. So um, Wednesday session was really geared towards uh, some functional work where we're focused on our um, our attacking players, how we're going to press in the, in the uh, attacking third, and working on the back line, how they're building out and building into the middle third. So um, you can kind of kind of do two things at once inside that session. Uh, we move some guys around. You know, we've been training Amisi. He's one that we've looked at as, as a potential left back. Um, and we t waited about 10 minutes in the game on Saturday and, and moved him forward as a right winger, and he completely changed the game. So we're still learning, you know, where these guys fit, what pieces of the puzzle they're gonna they're gonna bring to the team, um, and as we go through that, you know, we see what our strengths and weaknesses are. That's a huge benefit to um, just to get minutes for for guys right now. So, um, but the preseason was important for us, and and uh, you know, we were hoping to get at least two preseason preseason games in. We didn't, we weren't fortunate enough to do that, but um, you know, that that first game carried over, and it helped us get a result on Saturday.
right. Everybody good, guys? Yes, sir. sir. Uh, Sean said he was up here. Everybody seemed good. Uh, Macy, you're, you're good? Yeah. Sir? Okay. Um, guys, here's how we'll go. Uh, just a simple change in the midfield. We're going to start with two tens. Okay? That's all, the, that's all we're changing. Okay? Back. Uh, keeper's going to be Chaz. Back four. Um, AJ and Donald. I've spoken to both of you guys already. Yes, where's Donald? All right, you guys kind of know what we're trying to do there. All right, so let's be a solid start. Build from the back into the midfield. Lots of confidence, okay? Get us on the ball. Get us on the ball early. Let's build from the back with that confidence. Chaz, same thing from you, okay? Guys, the pin is huge. Let's use that to our advantage. Let's run these guys. Make them work, okay? What do we know about them coming into the game? They've got two guys on red cards, okay? So they're not playing. Their best goal scorer, uh, Javier, is that his name? Julio. Julio, he's not playing tonight, okay? okay? Guys, you're playing a hungry team that you beat twice and knocked them out of the playoffs last year, okay? They've been thinking about this for a while. All right, we need to bring that from the very beginning. You understand that? It means we need to play quickly, one and two touch, making good decisions, moving off of each other, playing together, sharing the ball, okay? So, uh, I don't think they're a team that's going to get on the ball and build a lot. So let's take them off the ball. Let's keep possession. All right? Make them run. Make them work. Okay? I just, the one thing is, and one thing we saw in this past week, uh, defensively, if we're, if there's a free kick against us, be prepared quickly, okay? Look for direction from your goalkeeper. Get there quick and get set, and then start picking up players outside of that. And to follow that, guys, let's restart quickly. All right, if there's a foul, put the ball down and let's play with speed. Okay, we have so much depth here. Let's use it to our advantage. A little video I was able to watch on them, they don't follow backside runs hardly at all. Yep. So if we can get deep and put that ball on the far side, it's pretty much wide open. They get lost really easy. They get lost in the middle. It's not a huge amount of organization, but like you guys already said, they work extremely hard. I mean, they're willing to go after the ball. They push a bunch forward. If we can get them, on, if we can get them coming back out the other side, I think we can. Um, you know, as far as last week goes, no free service tonight. I mean, that, that's what killed us in the first half. We allowed people to get their heads up with 10 seconds and just stare at a field. No free service tonight. Get up in the shit. Make sure we're taking care of business. All right? Stay on top of them. Let's do it the right way. Guys, mentally, just, cl just tune in the whole time. All right? They do lack discipline. They will get frustrated. It's your job to stay focused and be professional and play through that. Keep your head. You're going to get kicked. Play through it. All right? Just... Let them get the cards. All right, play through it. Okay, as soon as the guy gets a yellow card, then let's go at him and force him to get another one. All right, think about those things. Okay, we'll figure out where we need to match up and where we can isolate some different things as the game goes, but stay disciplined. Stay together. Don't get, let the heat of the moment get the best of you. Just stay focused. Okay, it's 90 minutes. You got plenty of time to score goals. Let's go at this team. Okay, fair enough. Let's we got hey, three points tonight. Let's go. Three points. First three. Let's go. Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Good save! Hey Michael, welcome back to The Pit. We have game one of the UPSL season. Um, how do you feel going into this game? I feel really good. Uh, we had a really good week of training. Uh, coming back after our game on uh, Saturday, got to uh, really go into training and uh, work on some of the things that the coaching staff was looking for. And uh, we definitely pushed and competed this week in training and we're looking forward to being able to play tonight. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, I don't want to hold you too long, so I got one more question for you. Yep. 
Uh, last time you guys faced this team was in the semifinals of your conference. What's that mean to be playing them game one? Uh, it's just another game, man. It's just another game. Uh, whoever the opponent is, we're coming out ready to go, guns blazing, and uh, get three points. That's the, that's the message staff sending. That's the message that's uh, brought down to us, and we're ready to go play. Thank you, Michael. Yep. Cheers, guys. Thanks. You know, from a discipline, you know, perspective, we know if we do the things we're supposed to do, we stay organized, we stay disciplined, we stay smart. Um, we think as the game goes forward, it'll it'll move into our favor. Um, our organization, I felt like, was pretty strong. Uh, we started off really well in the midfield. Uh, we actually kind of switched things this week where we've been playing kind of two, two pivot players, two sixes, defensive midfielders. Uh, we switched and went to and played two attacking midfielders. Um, and it allowed us to press them higher up the field, which forced some turnovers, which led to the second goal um, or the, the third goal, I think. But, you know, that, that pressing style is what we want. Uh, that's why our fitness levels have to be so, so much higher than where we are right now. Um, and, and that's the brand of football we want. We want to be able to turn, turn teams over in their half of the field and be able to counter with speed and in transition and create moments that, that way. So Talk to me a little bit about how the mood changed, especially in the field, once when you've got, you know, yeah. that goal at the 11th minute. And then, you know, the second one, we were talking about Amisi, how you were putting him on the left and trying him there. How he kind of sped that ball super fast, got it to Muneeb. Yeah. Muneeb hit the back of the net. Once again, you're leading two, two to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, you know, defending kind of got a little tough on the other yeah. side. And Chaz was left a little bit alone. So what was kind of... Yeah, the I mean, that's, that's, there's going to be breakdowns. So that's how it happens sometimes. Uh, we, we're asking, you know, Coach Doc, he wasn't able to get there on time. He was out with a club game. 
and we knew that going in. So we we were uh, played Donald Velez in the back, who's typically not he's never played center back for us there. Uh, but he was trying to get comfortable with it, um, and he didn't have much of a preseason either. He stepped up and does does what Donald does for us, which is always just just what a captain should do is step into that role. Uh, we just made a mistake. Uh, we kind of let our our guard down, if you will. Um, our midfield didn't recover in transition, and then we got just we just got beat. But you know what we did do after we gave up the goal is we responded again. You know, and that's the the way the lines were last year is every time we seemed to give up something that we shouldn't have given up we responded even bigger. And that was that, once again, we get the third goal and go to the halftime with the 3-1 lead. So uh, you want to see that response, and that's huge from the players. If if they kind of get down and then we give up a second goal, it's 2-2. Now you're starting to figure out what you know what, what kind of mental toughness do we have. So, But they we uh, we sorted it out, got the 3-1 lead, and went into halftime. Which player were you most surprised by? That's a good question. Um, I'll tell you, for me, the change to, to get Amici out wide um, just made us so much more dynamic uh, in the attacking third. Um, obviously, Muneev had a huge game. Uh, Peyton's fitness levels are getting better. Um, you know, Docky got in and really brought some leadership into the team. And our midfield was really dynamic. Akeem played, you know, 75, 80 minutes. And, and his, you know, this is his first year with us. Uh, and he was coming over from from you know the team that we play, that's his former team. So he had pressure on him to perform well on himself, and and we were really pleased with his performance. Um, you know, everybody right now is is just pulling their weight and doing the right things. Um, the the substitutes coming off the bench added some some intensity to the game, uh, brought some flair. You know, we thought, thought Leon was going to get his first goal. Um, Tristan almost had one as well. Um, and then we moved Peyton inside for Muneeb, you know, and let him play like a false nine. So he did some good things there. Um, I felt like Ethan and Michael did a really good job in the first half. They got a bit fatigued. Uh, they're both, you know, working on their fitness as well. Ethan's coming off a torn ACL and coming back into his, trying to get himself into fit fitness levels. But, um, you know, when we got cut in transition a few times, that was kind of the, the topic of halftime is just transition, getting back defensively, not giving the ball away in the middle of the field when we're spread out and we're attacking. We did that a few times, and that led to some of their chances. Really, they did, I mean, we didn't feel like they built up play against us at all. Most of their chances came off of our self-inflicted mistakes. And that's just part of, you know, this would have been, you know, game number two in a preseason, so it's still really early. We'll get cleaner. We'll get more crisp with our passing and things like that, and guys will learn how to move off of each other as they get more familiar with playing it with each other. But um, – you know, uh, I thought everybody did a great job. So obviously, you know, with Muneeb getting a hat trick, he gets man of the match. There's no doubt about that. Um, and it's, you know, we're really, really proud of where he's where he's gone, you know, from where he was last year, really trying to change his body to get back into a soccer fitness level and to where he is right now. He had a, had a massive game. So Yeah, he's talking about how he wants to be a leader. He really wants to, you know, help kind of the younger players to really step out of mm -hmm. their comfort zone and really show – what they're made of on the field. Sure, sure. And that's what we want. You know, we've got this group of guys that were here last year, and we feel like we've got some really, really talented young players. They're 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 on the cusp of being ready, but they're kind of, you know, they're just like any other team. You got a guy that's 25 years old that's been through this with versus an 18-year-old. It's the seven years is a huge difference in learning. Uh, you know, obviously not having Demir this week, um, you know, he unfortunately, you know, had a death in the family. And so we're standing behind him uh, and praying for his family right now. But not having him in the team because he's such a dynamic player um, and he adds so much versatility to us. Uh, he had a really, really great match against Louisville Metro. We were unfortunate not to have him in this one. Um, but we've got this, like I said, this young group of guys that we feel like are, are going to be playing into the future when you're talking three, four, five years down the road. Um, and it's important for them to be a part of this and learn and train and, and be, you know, positive in the training environment. It's hard. You know, sometimes you, you're you used to, as a 17-, 18-year-old, you know, being the top guy on your team in a high school program or a club program. And now you're playing with guys that have played beyond that. And so you're learning from those guys. And you want to play, and we want them to play, but but they also have to learn. And so that's a that's a great thing that we're, we're trying to get through to the group now. Uh, Muneeb's doing a good job of leading that. Um, you know, AJ's doing a good job of leading that. Docky really um, has done a tremendous job because he coaches at the at the youth club level, um, and he knows a lot of these kids. So he, he's coached them, and so he's trying to help them understand what it takes to be a professional player.
you know, second year program and we look back at it, you know, we go 11 and one last year, we're off to a good start now. We've got a big game coming up with Beeman United because they're coming off an 8-0 win. Uh, they also, they haven't given up a goal yet. They beat Music's or Nashville Knights 3-0. So they've got 11-4, none against. Um, and they've taken some of those guys from that Music City team over to their, their program. So right now they're top of the table. Um, and that's going to be the challenge is can we get that result, have the head-to-head -head, uh, going into the playoffs as well because we only get one game with them. So it's very important that we, uh, we travel well that day. It's down in Murfreesboro, um, and guys are ready to play in a different environment and, and, and take care of business. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us at BGFC TV, Coach Sutherland. Thank you guys very much. How do you think that this game will set the tone for the rest of the season? I mean, starting off the season, starting off the season with a – good with a good win right here on our home pitch um, is just a great way to start the season and we just need to progress on this next time we need to come out here and have a shutout instead of letting them score mm -hmm. put four or five six in and I just stop at three what do you believe helped you all win this game um, I think our coaches preparing us um, coaches saw some things or even early on in the game made some adjustments and it really opened the game wide open. Um, and then the team just gelling together, like I said, like, uh, like I was talking about earlier, um, we, if we miss a pass this time, we're not gonna miss that second time. Um, and just hold each other accountable. That's what we gotta do the rest of the season. Okay, and do you have any messages to the fans for the rest of the season? My message to the fans is that we're super, super thankful to them, super happy that they're coming out here. And we just want them to continue that and we're gonna keep continuing to put the, put the best product in the city for them. All righty, thank you. Thank you. Now that's a wrap on episode two of BGFC TV. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, and also follow the Golden Lions on all social media platforms. And don't forget to get your Golden Lions gear at H&W Dukes right on Fairview Avenue. Stay tuned for next week's episode.